The deep dive this morning goes back to 2006. And it was the year of the Eagles. They won their third premiership, winning a thriller by one point against the Sydney Swans. And who would forget this game? Famous moment, the pressure of Chick. Uh, the ball goes out to Hunter. And this was a seal. Look, that takes him the seven points. The Swans did kick another goal. But uh, look at this. The siren goes. And the jubilation after losing the premiership by four points the year before was amazing. Andrew Embley won the Norm Smith medal, 26 disposals. You see the heartbreak, Judd. He was in his prime. He won the Lee Matthews Trophy. Looks excited. That year, Duddy <laughs> Cuss comes up. We had the uh, captaincy stripped off him earlier in that, but uh, he was ready to party. It was Benny after that. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, talk about the rivalry over that time. Uh, here's a stat for you. Uh, the previous six encounters was four points or less. So it's amazing. Look, West Coast, four-point win. Sydney, four. West Coast, two. Sydney, one. And West Coast, a one-point win. And uh, Kano, there was some absolute thrillers there. Yeah, one of those games was was this one in 2006, a qualifying final, and Mickey O'Loughlin, what a player he was. He puts them up there by a point and gets right in the face of the West Coast supporters. But as you said, great rivalries are built in big games, and they had so many big games against each other in a short <laughs> yeah. space of time. And one of the iconic images there, and you just love to see it. And I love looking at the goal and mark of the year for each season. And Brad Ottens, what a player he became once he went from Richmond to Geelong. And this one was uh, in Sydney, and it was one of the great grabs you're ever likely to see from a big man just riding over the pack. It was Barry Hall who was there, and also uh, uh, the other player I can't think of who Barry, he flew over there. But it was an absolute, Darren Jolly it was. We haven't got that vision there at the moment. Not sure we've got Eddie Betts goal of the year as well. <laughs> uh, but that was the other one that was a ripper as well. well. Let's head on to Adam Goods because if you win one brown light, you're a star. If you win two, you're an absolute superstar. And that's exactly what Adam Goods did in 2006. As you see there, Kerr and Judd were in there and two doggies. Scott West, three votes behind and Brad Johnson. So Sydney, West Coast and also the Bulldogs, the top five places. But 21 disposals a game. Kick the goal in each game. Adam Goods, he was a wonderful player. Just about the best you'll see playing the ruck and wing. Yeah. He played half forward, he played half, he did it all. A brown light was a ruck and a brown light was a mid. Yeah. That's a good effort. I'll take you back to the infamous Siren Gate down in Tassie, which involved the team I was playing for at the time, St Kilda and Freo. So I remember I was actually on the bench, so I was actually wasn't involved in this part of the game. And we're all just we're all confused, just like everyone else. But it's quite funny. It's left to a man in Stephen Baker who can't kick over a jam tin at the best of times, and he's had another opportunity. So. Fast forward four days and the commission gave Frio the win and took the two points uh, off us at St Kilda. So you see Conley coming out happy. I'm not sure who he's spraying there, but there was a bit going. We're all <laughs> just we confused as everyone. Oh, look, everyone back to the young boy, 2006. I hardly got the drag. Back <laughs> uh, speaking of big after the siren moments, Daniel Motlop was one of the most talented players I've ever played with. Stuff that he could do, not a lot of players could do. So takes an absolute hanger against your mob there, BJ St Kilda down in Tassie. What a mark that is. And... Everyone would love this moment. Unfortunately for Daniel, he just missed to the right, which was uncharacteristic of him. And we got around him in the end, but he was shattered after that, clearly. It was also the season, Lordo, 2006, mm. when uh, Jason Akermanis' great career as a Brisbane Lion came to an end after he made some uh, continued comments about the club. And, and, and at the time, he was public about not knowing whether he was going to be at the, the Lions next year. And then ultimately, they took the decision away from him and, and basically uh, took him out of the team, forced him to play in the, the lesser league, never played again for the uh, the main team and, and ended up being a, a good play for the was Bulldogs. that on the back of an article? I seem to remember you writing an article that led to that. He did go on record with the Herald Sun at the time. Yes, <laughs> he you? did. Yes, he did. He did. Well, you wanted they to get his tight. story out. Uh, Kane, they Kane, were Kane, tight. Kane, Dame, Kane, Damo and Acker were very you tight. You leave me in beautifully because he said he didn't want to play for the Lions. He had no interest in the Lions. And look at this from Lee Matthews at his press conference that week. I feel very sad. Very sad. This is a terrible time for the club. When a player says, uh, you know, says I don't want to be here, our... His, his teammates weren't too happy with that. If you keep playing Russian roulette, you'll keep potentially shoot yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Straight to the point there, Lee. And, and what he said after that, not at the time, but it, I think it summed up Jason Akermanis' time as a line lead when he said he was basically like a consultant. Yeah. And I, I think that summed it up um, so perfectly that he performed the task required, but ultimately was going to be part of the the minutia that goes around in a footy club. Yeah, so. Lee tells a story that, that all the leadership group and the players walked in and said, we don't want to play with Jason anymore. And 
Lee said, treat him as a consultant now, not a teammate, uh, because Lee still wanted him at the team, but mm -hmm. then it just went too far and eventually they walked him out the door. And did he get walked out the Western Bulldogs too, didn't he, at the end? Yeah, there was a, a blow up at that yeah. uh, yeah. stage three, but you, you weren't I wasn't any, there, no, playing, but no. yeah, you are mates with the people yeah, who uh, made out, the decision. pushed yeah. out as well. So uh, was that in your article as well? Well, that, that happened a few years You're later. Still tight with yeah. him? Very tight. I still speak with him, yeah. 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 What about Lord hamstring? What about Lordo's hamstring? Was it you, you did your hamstring. Your first year as captain of the, the Bombers, and it ultimately affected your career, Lordo, because you ripped it off the bone. It was a, it was a doozy. You came back, um, but ultimately weren't ever the same again. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, Leo Barry, you star. I uh, kicked six on him in a quarter just the week before. <laughs> 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 hit, me, hit me at the wrong time. <laughs> hit me at the wrong time. And you're right, Damo. Speed off the mark. Uh, pretty much have to learn to walk and run again after that. So it was... I do believe we have the mark and goal here now, Lord. Okay, yeah. Brad Ottens. Let's take a look at Brad riding high at the uh, Sydney Cricket Ground. I think it was. Uh, no, no, at oh, the ANZ won. Stadium. It was actually over Darren Jolly and Barry Hall. So that was an absolute beauty from Brad Ottens. I loved him at Geelong. He was a why they won three premierships. And Eddie Betts. This was the first of his four goals of the year that he that he won. So Eddie Betts playing for the Blues at this point was uh, brilliant. It's a big game against Collingwood. Uh, look at the scoreboard. They're in front and Eddie Betts, one of his four goals of the year. One of the uh, yes. I can watch Eddie Betts highlights all day. Good job again, Lord. That's 2006 on the deep dive.